Hi and welcome to Online Appliance Tech. Today we're going over the Art Elf Era code on the LG French Door Refrigerator. So if you have this code and your water or the ice is not dispensed, more than likely it's your evaporator fan motor. So how it works is DC fan motor has three wires. You have two input for your DC voltage and then it, uh, I guess you could say, senses the resistance of the fan speed. And if it doesn't correspond with the main control board within 65 seconds, you'll get that error code, the RF, and then your water or your ice dispenser will not work. So what you will need to do is remove all the shelves as you can see here. And right here in a moment, I'll show you exactly how to get the back panel off. Usually I would unplug this, but I'll keep it plugged in so you can see what's going on. You have two Phillips screws here on the left. Uh, this one actually only has one, but you have two. And then you'll slide this uh, left support off. As you can see here, I'm missing the screws. So this is slides right off. Uh, don't worry about removing the right one. You have two clips you have to remove. You can take a flathead and just prop it pop them right out. I always get this question how to replace this so it's pretty simple you just turn to the left to remove and then you'll just remove the old filter and put the new one back on click in click out and then to place it back on you just turn it put it on turn it to the right it'll click right in fairly simple. Uh, back to topic so you remove these three flip screws you have two at the bottom and one at the top, this is for the support bar. So once you remove the top one, just make sure the bar doesn't fall off. Okay, once you remove the bar, just you'll remove the one Phillips screw that pulls the evaporator cover towards to the housing of the fridge. So like I said earlier, usually you would unplug this before you do this. I just left it plugged in so you can see exactly what's going on. So you're going to pull this panel forward by the top. You don't want to like press your fingers in and grab it because you actually can mess up the styrofoam on the inside. So just be very careful. And then you'll have one harness that connects to the wall here. So right now I'm definitely going to unplug it because I'm going to remove the harness. I like using a flathead to remove it, just kind of press into the clip and just uh, kind of wedge it down, I guess you would say. Uh, just be careful if you do do that not to hit the evaporator, which you could cause a, a free on leak. It looks, like, it looks like someone's worked on this before, it's kind of taped together, so I have no idea what happened in this instance, but who knows. So this is behind the cover. As you can see here, we have big gashes inside this uh, back cover, which kind of indicates that someone yanked it off the wall or yanked it off the evaporator, which stuck to it and probably pulled the styrofoam off and so forth. So this is the motor that I thought that we would need, but actually I got the wrong motor, but I'm gonna show you how to replace it anyway, just so you can uh, see how to do the job. Um, I recommend going to lgparts.com, type in your model number and get the right part. I uh, went to a different website and took this, got to this point and realized, hey, I got the wrong part. So I'll have to come back with the right motor eventually. So just to remove all the Phillips screws, just turn it over just like that. And then you have one Phillips screw that holds this into place. And then you got your harness here, which is basically you clip off and clip on real simple. So let me show you exactly how to do this. Okay, let's go ahead and remove this one fillet screw. This is the only screw that holds this into the cover, the evaporator cover, and then you just pull this straight off. And then as you can see, we have the fan motor just pulls right out. It has the three wires, uh, two for the, the input power and one for the feedback signal, which is the uh, code, the air code, I guess, when it doesn't perform correctly. Okay, let's imagine I did have the correct fan. So this fan basically sits behind this cover, kind of like mm, this, I guess you would say. But anyway, the way you would want to install the new fan is you'll just align this new fan up, or imaginary new fan. Uh, with the cover it can only go one way just like I said it's a, like a puzzle piece you would put on 
and then you'll just place this cover on top and align the holes with the holes to the evaporator cover and then you'll put that one Phillips screw back in its place and now obviously make sure it's aligned because it can only go in if it's aligned and if you want to just twist your fan and make sure it's not hitting nothing and now all you want to do is just flip this uh, evaporator fan cover over and then you'll twist the fan make sure it's not hitting and then you'll install these Phillips screws So as you can see here, we have a lot of harnesses on the left here. So if we try to put this in like this, it's going to obviously not be, it won't be able to go against the wall like it should be flush. And then I'll even hit the evaporator. So let me give you a good example. So we'll put this harness in. And then we'll try to press it in and you'll see it just doesn't want to go on right. So you definitely going to have to tape that up. And, tuck it in correctly because you can mess up the evaporator if you press it in like that. So as you see here it has a big gap here and you can see all the harnesses and how that would hit the evaporator so what we're going to do is we're going to take this back off and then uh, tuck it but this goes in but if you look here on the right has a big gap and that big gap could be a problem because that evaporator will basically absorb the heat and cause a big uh, ice effect and, and restrict the airflow. So this take this back off and see if we can tape these wires wires in to place where they're not just all over the place. Uh, I don't know if this was done because someone's worked on it before and didn't or pulled them out of the housing. Um, it shouldn't be like this. I, I've never seen this, but if yours is like this, you'll definitely have to tape it in. So what I'm going to do here is try to even out these harnesses where they're not just all stacked on each other, where that can kind of press it in to this, uh, the back of the cover to keep it from uh, sticking out. And then I'll just take a piece of this uh, aluminum tape to put over it to hold it in place. Let's see what we can do. Also, it looks like it should have went in this area, but I don't see me putting all these harnesses in this area. So I'll just try to press them as much as possible. Like I said, use this uh, aluminum tape. Okay, round two. Let's try to see what happens here. So you have three little clips in the bottom that has to clips, clip into the bottom housing. Uh, line them up before you press in. And then obviously you'll connect your harness. Okay. And now we'll just, like I said, make sure the bottom, or the bottom aligned and then you'll just press the top in and then you'll hit the right pop it in and then as you can see here everything's nice and sealed and that that's how it should be so now let's install the support bracket okay so you have one Phillips screw at the top i recommend putting the top one first and then the bottom two uh, for the bottom and then the one on the left Now you'll install the side support 
for the shelf, you slide it into the wall, and then you put your two little screws to hold it in, and then you'll put your two little clips, one at the top, and one at the bottom. So I hope this video resolves your RF error code. If you have any questions, just leave in the comments below. And please like and subscribe for more future tips and videos. Thank you and have a good day.